Bibles tonight from the book of John, chapter number 1. John, chapter number 1. I'm going to pick up really uh, in verse number 40 or 35. I'll read down through. And I want to look at two phrases that are said repeatedly in, in, in God's Word as we look at this passage. You're going to find these are some of the first disciples here and uh, what God is working and moving in their life. John speaking, and I love the way he speaks as he uh, always talks about himself as being the other, the one that God loved. Verse number 35, and after, again the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And when two disciples heard him speak, and, and they followed Jesus, then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What, what do you seek? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where do you dwell? And he said unto them, Come, come, come and see. Come and see. And they came and they saw where he dwelt and, and abode with him that day, for it was about the, uh, the tenth hour. And one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Uh, he uh, first found his own brother's assignment and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, You are Simon, the son of, of, of Jonah, you shall be called Cephas, which is, uh, which is by interpretation stone. Jumping on down to verse number 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Come, come, uh, uh, can there any good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said unto him, Come, come, come and see. Come and see. I feel like already when I try to start out by saying this evening and building even upon what Sister Susan and Brother David said, folks are, we sometimes don't even realize the key that we play and they're rolling forward to what God has uh, in a service. But we, we feel like today that, that uh, in the church, maybe that we uh, compete against. Uh, intellectualism, that we need to be very intelligent uh, uh, about things theological. Uh, 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 we, we feel like uh, uh, we need to be able to give uh, a good, a good uh, argument with intelligence and, and, and theological statements. And, and, and I think that beyond being able to just be able to give those things, the greatest thing that we can do is what Jesus called, and then what what Nathaniel uh, uh, or what Philip said, uh, and repeating Jesus, come and see, come and see. And there's a lot to be said for that tonight. I think there's a challenge to us as a church: come and see, come and see. What what do we want people to see? And what is this relationship with God all about? Come and see. And so, uh, uh, the, the, the Word of God in Revelation says, in Revelation 22, 17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. Uh, and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. And so I, I want us to look at what, what is being said when Jesus said, come and see. And then, 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 then we find that it's being uh, reiterated by Philip as he said to Nathaniel, come and see. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. Come, come, come and see. So I want us to be a church tonight, amen, that's a come and see church. Amen. I'm not worried about being able to give some big theological answer. Amen. I've said it over and over again. Too many times we try to be the fix-it person for everybody else. Amen. And there's only one fix-it person. Amen. Sometimes we try to be the Savior and there's only one Savior. Amen. Jesus Christ. And so what do we as believers, uh, what are we to experience? How are we to articulate to others? Come. Come and see. Beyond being theological, beyond having an answer for the, the argument or the question, come and see. 
And so the first thing that I see when Jesus and then uh, 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 Philip speaks, come and see, it's a call for an invitation. And just as it was there in Revelation, come and see Christ and the church. We don't have anything to hide. Come and see. Come and see. Come on in. Let's see what God's doing. Amen. There's no, there's no gimmicks. There's no schemes. Amen. Come and see. If you've been following the news lately, I shared about the man in Africa. But more and more folks that, 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 that pastor churches the church is evangelists, hiring people that will be healed. Amen. I don't believe that we need to do that. Amen. When we're in touch with God. Amen. We've come and we've seen who He is and the power that He gives. Amen. We can give the invitation to all without intimidation, without worry. Come and see. Amen. Jesus Christ. Come and experience what the church is doing. The invitation is is both uh, personal to every individual, but it's also universal. It's for everybody. Come and see what God is doing. Amen. Come and, and come and look. Come and inspect. Amen. If I invite you to come and inspect, I want you to look at every nook and every cranny. I want you to see it for yourself. Inspect. Come and see what God has in store for you. I want to ask you tonight. Amen. Have we taken the invitation of Christ? It's far more than just salvation. Amen. But are we coming and are we seeing? Are we the one that's a thirst? Amen. Are we the one that wants to hear? Amen. Come and see. Amen. I, I, I believe this, that when we inspect and we, uh, we, we, we look it through and through, we can prove and we, we can stand the test of faith. Amen. Come. Come and see. So it's a call of invitation to come and see. As we look at this invitation, there's a few things about it. If I say unto you, come here, come. The very first thing that I think about is, is that it's, it's a call of movement. If you're to come, that means that you're to move. When I say to Burnley about, come, come here. I want, come. It's, it's a call of movement. And there has to be a response. Amen. It is a positive movement. And it is a deliberate movement. Amen. When Christ calls to us, amen, it's a move in a positive direction. Amen. Brother David, you said about children, and I hear folks all the time, and you know, you, you talk to Jesus about your children, but one thing you don't want to see them doing is moving in a negative direction. But sometimes what can you do but just kind of leave your hands off? Amen. We've all experienced it with people before. Amen. They navigate in a negative direction. Uh, they're moving, but not in the right direction. Amen. But when we move toward Christ, amen, it is a positive, deliberate movement. Amen. And there's something about that movement. There is no spectators on the sideline. Amen. But it is participators. Amen. When God calls us to come and see. Maybe you might say, I don't like to be the first one. I don't like to be the first one to lead the way. It's not me. It's not my personality. Amen. However, there are no, no one on the sidelines who's just standing there watching when Christ calls and He says, come and see. Amen. It's a deliberate, positive movement where we become a participant and seeing what Christ is like. And we look at Him and what He has. Amen. There is never a critic who can tear up what true faith and seeing what God can do is about. Someone can criticize all they want. I've had folks criticize relationship with God. I've had folks criticize the church. You have too. But let me tell you, my experience, because I've come and I've saw what God can do, nothing can tear up the fabric of that faith when we saw what God can do, when we, uh, uh, when we responded to the invitation. Amen. Responding to the invitation. Come and see. Come and taste. Come and be a participant. It is positive. It is deliberate. It is being active in movement. But not only is there movement in the invitation to come, but there's also separation. If I asked you tonight if you would come here, Brother David, if I were to say to you, come here, you would have to do something. You would have to leave your seat. 
And then you would have to let go of what you're holding on to. And so uh, uh, naturally leaving something is what happens when you come. He was calling to his disciples and he was telling them to come and, and follow, come and see. Amen. They were leaving their own lifestyles. They would be leaving their family. Amen. They would be leaving everything that they knew, but they were willing to come and see a man, amen, who is the Messiah, the one who was prophesied about. I'm coming to see God, amen, in flesh. Can I tell you that when God God calls us. Uh, there's not just a coming, but there is a leaving. The Word of God says in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and, and, and I will receive you. Amen. Too often, amen, people in the church are want to come and see Jesus, but they want to come with their sin. They want to come with their own ideology. They want to come holding on to the very things that God does not want. Amen. So when we come and we see Jesus, amen, there's a leaving behind of the self. Amen. There's a leaving behind of sin. Amen. There's a coming out of the darkness and walking in the light. Amen. It's coming and seeing. I think the problem with the church is, amen, we come, amen, and the movement that we make in our coming, we don't let go of anything, but we drag it along with us. Amen. God wants us to come and see and to experience the new. If we struggle with our Christianity, we struggle with our relationship with God, I would most definitely say, take evaluation. Have you come? Have you left those things behind? Or are you trying to hold on to the best of both worlds? God's response to us is come and see. The real fabric of faith can never be woven. Amen. If we never let go. Of that which is behind. Amen. Come and see. His righteousness. Amen. Has to be embraced. We have to forsake old companions and old paths. Amen. His, his righteousness dwells where once sin dwelt. We have to be willing to leave our sin. And go to his righteousness. That we may know brother David. The power of His presence. I believe that God's calling out to that. Come. Come and see. Come into my presence. But what are the things that hold us back? I'm not talking to unsaved people tonight. I'm talking to folks who are still holding on to things when God's invitation is come. We hold on to things because they're comfortable. We hold on to things because they're carnal. Amen. And God says, we've got to let go. So there's movement, but there's separation. But it also involves an objective. Not only do we have to leave something, but we have to come into something. We live in a very sinful world. And to come unto Christ means that we have to embrace the culture of His holiness and His righteousness. So letting go means that I'm embracing something far greater than what this world knows and understands. And that's the holiness of God. I love what Hebrews chapter number 10, let me turn there tonight. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 6. The Bible says, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins, you have no pleasure. And God didn't take pleasure in just a sacrifice to cover up sin. God wanted something better than just that cover up and that which lasted for just a very temporal amount of time. Then said I, Lo, I come, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Amen. God is wanting us to come into a place, amen, where our life is now embraced in doing His perfect will. Amen. It, it embraces grabbing hold of God and His righteousness and His holiness and His perfect will for our life. Amen. Not my will, but Thy will be done. So coming unto God means this. It is a positive movement. Amen. It is a 
separation from what's behind, but it is also the grasping onto an object of who He is and where He desires for us to be. I'm asking you tonight, have you come? Amen. Are you coming and are you seeing who God is? The invitation is perpetual. Come. Come and see. Not only do we find it's a call of invitation, but it's an experience. I find that this is interesting tonight. Probably 60, 80 years ago, there was a meeting of the Advisory Council of the American Bible Society in New York City. And, 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 and one of the secretaries had written a letter to a group of businessmen. And they asked for donations uh, uh, to, to give out Bibles and to, to be able to fund those Bibles. And so the businessman wrote back and he, 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 he said this. He said, uh, 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 the, the air of us giving you money uh, uh, for Bibles is I do not see the effectiveness of the Bible and, and of Christianity in the overall picture of our nation. You see, the problem of it is, amen, we can't look for President Trump. We can't look for any other leaders in our country to bring revival. You know what's going to bring revival? When we as believers, amen, we leave that place of being content and we hear the call of the Spirit that says, come and see. And we say, I I'm taking God in His Word and I'm coming and I'm seeing. Amen. First of all, it must be an experience in our life personally. Personally. Amen. Don't look at it on a, on a national level. Amen. It needs to be when men and women fall in love with God and the Word of God and they hear the Word of God and the Spirit of God say, come, come, come and see. Amen. And that experience leads others to see that there is a relationship with Christ that is real because I see that individual who's experienced a call to come and they laugh and, and, and that movement was positive. And they left everything behind, but they embraced the objective of the presence of a holy God. And I see God working and moving in their life. Amen. God wants us to embrace His Word. Amen. God wants us to come and see what He has for us. Amen. Not looking on a national level, but looking at statistics on a personal level. What would it be like if the church, if everyone that said I'm a Christian, really lived the life of David, of that I'm coming and I'm seeing. I'm coming and I'm seeing. Hey folks, I think it's probably nationwide, but I need to tell you that you talk to folks throughout this valley, they all know Jesus. But I wouldn't base my relationship with Jesus on the majority. And I'm not being mean to people. I'm just saying that of a fact. Because you know what? Because the experience of them saying what the Bible has done for them or what their relationship with God is does not line up. The fabric of their faith can be easily torn into shreds. Amen. But I need to tell you there are a few people, amen, that they tell me I know Jesus Amen. And they've entered into a relationship where they've heard God say, come, come and see. And they forgot about everybody else. Amen. They forgot their, their old life, their old position. They left it behind. And in a moment, a, a movement in a positive direction where they didn't stand on the sidelines. Amen. But they objectively, objectively grabbed hold of the grace of God and left behind the things of this world. Amen. The fabric of their faith is woven and strong and it's ever that when someone will come and see, amen, that God works and moves in that life. Come. Come and see. I believe that, to be frank with you, we can never base fact on something that we have not had an experience and observation with. Just simply wouldn't be proven true. If I go to... Brother Dennis for something for my vehicle. He said, this is a new gadget. I don't know anything about it. It's never been tried, but you'd like to have it on your vehicle. I'd probably be somewhat hesitant. I would trust him. But Brother Dennis wouldn't do that to me because it's not been factually proven. 
what this world needs. To be honest, we're all at large, but what our community needs is a church that says, here's the evidence and here's the facts of what it's like to come and see Jesus Christ. God help us to, to be a church full of men and women. And as you said, Brother David, that it affects a younger generation that they don't walk away because they've been educated by a system that's so humanistic and socialistic that they go off on, on, on some downward spiral. But they say, even in the middle of a, a messed up world, they'll say, but I know my daddy had an experience with God. And I know brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, they've come and seen the Lord and there's no shredding of the fabric of their faith. Amen. Because it's been woven very thick. Amen. As they've experienced with it and they proved it to be true that you can come and see and you can trust God. Oh, God, help us tonight to be those men and women who have come and seen. Amen. And it shows true that the relationship with God and the gift of God's love. Amen. It's only valid. Amen. When we put our faith and trust upon the cross of Calvary. Amen. When we put our confidence in the blood of Jesus Christ. When our eyes, amen, doesn't see the things around us. Amen. But it looks by faith faith to a Savior, amen, who's able to redeem, who's able to be trusted, even in uncertainty, amen, that is where faith is put to the test, we come and we see, I want to be a church full of people that come, I just come on Sunday morning, or come on a particular service time, just to come, but we come because we've accepted the call of the cross. The call of the Christ of Calvary. Not only is it an experience, it's an invitation, it's an experience, but it's a revelation. He not only said to come, but the call was to see. To see. Do you know what God wants to do? He wants to show us all the things that are possible. Amen. All the things that are possible. What did he say? He said, with men, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So if we want to see the impossible work, amen, we've got to come, first of all. And then he wants to show us, amen, the gift of sight. And if you remember in John chapter number 9, uh, we, read, we read about a, a, a man who received a sight. And, and the question was whether he be a sinner or, or, or whether his parents said, who said that he's blind? Amen. But the blind man said this. He said, I don't know if it was me or who it was. But one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. Amen. All the other things don't really matter. Amen. When we come and we experience seeing what God, amen, does in the middle of those who will put their confidence and trust and faith in Him. Amen. We don't have to have it medically lined up. We don't have to have it financially lined up. We don't have to understand the social aspects of it. Amen. All we need to do is come and see what God can do in a life that's surrendered. Amen. Amen. Come. Come. Come and see. Amen. But David, as you said, I don't need to have a theological statement about it. There may be times where we have that. Sister Susan, just being able to have that experience where God speaks simply but so complex to us. Come. Come. Come and see. So it's the gift of sight, but it's the meaning of sight. Jesus said this. He said, those who have seen me have seen the Father. Amen. We can see God. We don't have to wonder who he is or where he's at, but we can see God. Brother David, you said that good. You got my, my wheels turning. Sometimes my wheels turn and then I 
get lost in the second statement. I have to bring myself back. But you were saying about how do you experience the presence of God. You said about how it is joy, but it's that heaviness as well. And then the wheels just start turning about what is the presence of God. You know, I've never seen God physically. But all, oh, there has been numerous, multiple, many times that I've seen God in church. Amen. Amen. It's the manifestation of who He is. To be able to go out of the building and tell folks, we saw God in church tonight. You know, their understanding doesn't grasp it because they've not come to the place where they've come and movement. They, they've let go of what, what they were holding on to and they grabbed hold subjectively of God to be able to see from a justice. We see the manifest presence of God. 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 Come and see. In Mark chapter number 8, we see a man who saw every man clearly. See, it's interesting as I read this text. You know, God knew all about loving people without any type of stereotype, without any type of prejudice, long before this ever came out in, in, in our culture. Because he already addressed it. And Daniel, the, the Daniel said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? He was prejudiced, he was stereotyping. And what did Philip say to him? Come. Come and see. You want things to change in your life? How you feel toward other people? You know what will change that? Come. Come and see. Amen. That God loves people of every color, every shape, every size, every chronological position that they stand in. Amen. From youngest to oldest, God loves them. Amen. And when we come and we see, amen, there's something about our life that without prejudice and without stereotype, amen, we love people and we want them to experience the same thing. Amen. Uh, come and see. Come and see. Uh, and it'll move you away from your prejudice. It'll move you away from your stereotype. It'll move you away from a place where you have barriers and walls built up. Amen. You can come and see and you can share the love of God with others. Amen. I, 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 it's a, it's a I think about the woman at the well. She said this. After Jesus had met with her, told her about her condition, gave her water and drink, and shared with her the message of salvation, what did she do? She went back to her family and friends, and what did she say? Come and see. Come and see. Come and see a man who told me everything that I ever did. You see what happens when we get in the presence of God and we accept the invitation to come and see. Our response is such an evangelistic response. You know why the, the, the Christianity uh, uh, is not spreading Amen. The, in our country the way it is in other countries? Amen. Because we've not come and seen. Therefore, we don't go out and tell others to come and see. Amen. The greatest evangelistic tool is for us to experience Jesus Christ. To come. Amen. To move toward Him. To let go. To grab hold of Him. To begin to see and experience. Amen. By faith what God can do. And we'll leave with a message to others. Come. Come and see. And I want this to be a come and see church. Come and see what God will do. Come and see Jesus. This is about Christ at Miracle Revival. But on a personal level, it has to start. Sister Beth, if you come with me, I want every one of us come and see and experience Jesus. Listen, we don't have to explain the world will understand it. Sister Susan, the world will understand God speaking to you in that moment by your little wild lamp. You don't need to give an explanation. You know God spoke. And Brother David, the presence of God is this. The world don't understand it. And we don't have to give some big explanation. We just know that we've come 
and we've seen God. Tonight, I wonder if the culture of our church could be that no matter what the world says, they'll never tear the fabric of our faith because it's woven so tightly because we've answered the call to come and see. Maybe I can be a Philip, echoing what Christ said. Come and see. We leave behind all our stereotypes, all of our prejudice, everything else. Come and see. The eyes of faith says, with man this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Tonight, this is my invitation as I join you around these altars. Come. Come and see. Make a positive movement. Letting go of what's there and moving and grabbing a hold of what God has. My final thing is this. If you are invited to something, most often it'll say RSVP. That means you need to give a response back for your reservation. Tonight around these altars, as Christ has given the call to come and see, would you give that response back? Jesus, I'm coming. I'm coming to see. Would you get her in tonight?